Howdy there, folks. Today on Wild Ways Our Stuff, we take a look at how exactly I make my videos. Let's get into it. Now, I'm a visual effects artist by trade, and so I try and put a lot of that stuff into my videos. Ah, I bet you get a visual effects unless you plug it in, off. So this is actually going to be the first of a three-part video series. The first part today we're going to be talking about recording equipment, video resolutions, and the raw edit of the footage. Next up we're going to get into the motion graphics and visual effects which is a whole other element entirely. And third and finally we're going to be talking about doing video essays and more of the sort of gun review stuff that you might see on the channel from time to time. My machete! I was wondering where this was! Holy cow! Now in order to play yourself you're going to need gear. Now here's the key. How do you mount cameras on your gear in order to capture your gameplay in a way that's satisfying when you go to edit it and post? Let me show you. And for that, I'm going to need my own gear. Oh, okay, here. Yeah. Here we go. All right, so here, let me start out with my helmet cam. This is what I use in most of my videos for a helmet cam setup. Now, I have a screw placed here, two washers, and the GoPro mount for that. The reason I have my GoPro placed here instead of at my forehead level is that I want to make my airsoft videos feel as much like video games as possible. And for those that don't know, we actually have video game cameras and first person shooter cameras placed somewhat near our neck or our upper chest area. So I'm trying to emulate that by getting the camera as far down as possible. Brain Exploder, a channel I highly recommend, has actually gotten his viewpoint even closer by taking small little cameras that you use for stuff like drones and actually placing them inside of his goggles so he can see straight out. Now that's a really good method. Um, it comes out pretty good. They do have a little bit less of a field of view though. Next up, we'll talk about what makes your airsoft videos actually watchable, well, if you're at a field scenario, and that is the scope cam. Scope cams actually used to be placed on the top via big gigantic mounts and tubular cameras. Thankfully, we have something much smaller and much better today. The scope cam. If you're wondering about my actual camera, it is the Run Cam 2 Airsoft Edition. It comes with a 35 millimeter zoom lens for getting nice mid-range shots up close and personal in your camera. The unfortunate thing about this camera though is that it is so small it has a small battery life so I have attached an external battery pack to mine and you may find yourself needing to do the same for yours if you go for anything longer than 10 minute skirmishes. All right, now let's get technical by talking about FPS versus shutter speed. So bottom line, when you're recording airsoft or action-based videos, you're going to be wanting to shoot at 60 frames a second and the highest shutter speed possible. Well, usually. The thing about high shutter speeds is it leaves less time for the camera to record light information. And therefore, your picture is going to be kind of dark if you're recording in a low light scenario. So you may want to bump down that shutter speed. Now the trade-off is that a high shutter speed also makes the action look very crisp and very clear and very precise. Now if you go in reverse, a very low shutter speed makes the movement have tons of motion blur and it makes it very jagged. So you're really hunting for the best of your light and how high of a shutter speed you can get. Now a lot of action cameras don't exactly let you fine tune the shutter speed settings at all. So in that essence, I highly recommend going with the highest shutter speed possible for your particular action camera. Camera setup wise, the two most important things are going to be your head cam and your scope cam. Now a scope cam can kind of be put off a little bit if you're playing CQB and only if you're playing CQB Airsoft. Now I highly recommend getting yourself a third camera to put at the barrel of your gun. This is very, very useful for getting those action shots where you're diving to the ground. It tends to give the audience a good perspective on how you move about the battlefield. And finally, there's one last habit that you really, really should get into, and I didn't do it when I first started, and it kind of made my videos a little worse. Now, it's kind of hard to remember when you're actually playing and you're in the heat of the moment, but when you take that shot and you get that person downed, what I tended to do was I would aim my gun, shoot, look, and see if the person had died. Now, what you're going to want to do instead of doing what I did, because it tends not to capture what the person did very good, was take your shot and just hold for a moment and observe what happened to that player through your scope because that's going to make sure that your scope cam can pick up on every little minute detail of that person getting whacked in the face and the audience loves to see that shit on YouTube. Trust me. So let's say you got a good day of airsoft going. You went out, you recorded your gameplay. Make sure you're recording both pieces of footage at the same time between your scope cam and your GoPro. We're going to sync it up in post. But now you want to take that footage and you want to go and edit it. Well, let's head to the editing bay to see how that works. Ah, yeah, you get enough good gameplay 
Now, the first thing you're going to want to do when putting together your gameplay is going to be syncing audio, and this is how it's done. So, my clips have been chopped up a whole bunch by the editing process, but you can kind of take a look here and see what I've done. These two areas here match. I typically use the first point at which I'm shooting my gun as a sort of reference and sync point. You've got a whole lot of information in this line graph of your audio, which this represents, representing the two sync points of your cameras. Now, if I align both audio tracks so that they're the same, all the clips will stay the same. Now, this is gonna be important for one very specific reason. And that reason, if you look at the top bar, is going to be switching in between my scope cam footage and my normal footage on the fly. So once those clips are synced up, I can press C or cut this open, and I can bring this clip back to the point at which I want the scope cam footage to start. Say I want to start here, right? So now we can be rolling, rolling, rolling. This is my head cam footage, and it switches to scope cam footage as the gun gets brought up, and shots are being fired from the gun. And of course, if you go all the way over to here, it switches back to my normal footage. Now this is where the majority of the edit is going to be taking place for your footage. And this process does take a very long time. And anytime you want to switch into your scope cam footage, you got to go in and do this process. Now, once you have your footage all aligned and in place with the scope cam elements you want to be showing and the other elements you don't want to be showing, not showing and yada, 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 the raw hard part is done. Next up, you can go in and you can take out scenes you want to remove. You know, you maybe shot one, two BBs, and then a sniper pings you from the head from a mile away. I know, we all hate that. Now, the beauty of it is that you can make yourself look like a better airsofter very easily by just taking out this clip. Now, the better you play, the less you got to do this, but the worse you play, the more you got to do that in order to make an entertaining video. This is going to be a little bit philosophical, but I do kind of tend to wonder some of the better airsofters, how much they're kind of fudging this stuff. Because you can really fudge it if you really want to. Hell, in fact, I can actually show you a way that you can take out getting shot by a BB in post. Don't use this, but it is possible. This is how you kind of get away with it. It's really, really simple. So here, if you watch this clip, I get shot and you can hear a trademark thud. Got hit, damn it. Yeah, did you hear that whack, right? Now you simply cut out this frame here, which I'll do in a second. Got hit, damn it. Did you catch it? The reason this works is that the sound of the BB impacting your clothes actually only occurs over the course of about a single frame. Now, of course, guys, don't be a dirty cheater. Don't use this, but it is very possible. And guys, that's just in editing. That's just using cuts of footage. That's not even including visual effects, which I'm going to be getting into next week's video. Now, learning to edit your videos and learning to paste your videos is a skill set that you do have to learn and develop over time, and the more you do it, the better you're going to get at it. It really is a sort of kind of a feel sort of thing. Just like I felt your girlfriend the other night. I don't have a girlfriend. Yeah, because I stole her last night. Ayo! If you like this kind of behind the scenes look at how I make my videos and the process that goes into it, make sure to stay subscribed for part two and part three. Part two will cover a bit more of the motion graphics, how I do kind of that scope zoom in effect. And it's gonna be where a big kind of chunk of the meat and kind of how I kind of give it the polish kind of goes. Um, part three is going to be covering a little bit more of the video essay format. But anyways guys, have a great day. Don't be a cheater. And that's all folks.